Now, the Nelson Mandela and Ahmed Kathrada Foundations are launching a book tonight celebrating the life of former Mozambican President Samora Michelle. Uh, Michelle's ex-wife, Grassa, and Justice Albisax are expected to speak there. The book was written by a Mozambican photojournalist, Gok Nam. Now, ENCA's Kaili Lekumalo is attending the launch and uh, joins us now. Uh, good evening, uh, Samkele. Has, I'm sorry, just, just say <laughs> Samkele. <laughs> Kaya, um, um, what has uh, the uh, function started? Well, for your, at any time from now onwards, the, the launch will actually start. And so many uh, prominent South Africans are arriving here. It's quite a very jubilant moment. And it just comes days before the 19th of October, which is, of course, the 32 years anniversary since the tragedy struck in Buzini when the plane where uh, the late uh, former president, Michelle, was on board. But joining us now, Vuyo, of course, is um, somebody who really knows uh, the story and uh, she has written quite a very fitting tribute uh, to the photographer who compiled these very interesting and riveting photos. That's of course uh, Mrs. Grassa Michelle. Thank you so much indeed for joining us ma'am this evening. Thank you for having me. And of course it's such a very iconic moment as we reflect on the life of this man Samora Michelle. Right. So what comes to your mind as we see this book launch? Well, this is a, an opportunity for us to bring Samora into the heart of uh, South Africans. We know he has been always there, but it, this is uh, a moment where, particularly for young generations, they are encouraged to connect with those who have given their lives for the freedom of our countries and Samara Michelle is for no doubt one of them. Not only he was the president of Mozambique but he was the champion of the struggle against apartheid and it's not by chance that he was killed exactly in South African soil. So this is a time to help those who are adults to remember but it, the, for young people is to connect with him. And I suppose it serves as a reminder about the very immense role that was played by the frontline states in making sure that Mozambique alone is just not independent, uh, isolated, surrounded by the apartheid state, but the entire region, uh, surrounding countries are also freed. And also, we're battling quite a number of challenges as a region. So I would imagine if Samora was alive, he would also be contributing in dealing with poverty, the very harsh socioeconomic conditions that we're still subjected to? In fact, uh, Samora's leadership, particularly immediately after independence, was to put in place institutions, policies, structures, which would uplift the living conditions of every Mozambican. And that is the reason, actually, he became a target of apartheid, because he was uh, developing a society which was exactly the opposite of what the uh, South African regime at the time was trying to convince the world that it was a system to, to uphold. And the inclusive actually I will say of a society of equality as the one which was being installed and developed in Mozambique infuriated the South African regime and they singled out as what they would call a bad example, a bad example for Zimbabwe, a bad example naturally for South Africans and it could have been also a bad example for Namibia. And this is a conversation which we needed to have with the young people to say, but why? Why they singled him out to eliminate him physically? Because they could not eliminate his thinking, 
the approach he had to the meaning of independence and the way he was leading the South African society. As ideas, they failed and they thought in a day narrow way that eliminating physically, then also that system would fall apart. And just before I let you go, ma'am, every year when it comes to October, the mystery surrounding his passing, it all is comes. And we've seen the MAGA Commission, we've seen the TRC. Perhaps as the family, I would imagine that you still want perhaps this matter to be revisited. Absolutely. Uh, you know, for us as a family to have the possibility of uh, dealing with this tragedy and have closure, we need to know the truth. And I must tell you that we took numerous initiatives approaching heads of states, approaching institutions which could help us to clarify what exactly has happened. We know he was assassinated, but how it is something which even if someone dies of natural causes, as a family member, you still want to know what have, has taken him. So we still uh, keep the hope that one day this will be come to the light of the day so that uh, not only myself but particularly my children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they will know what has happened to their father, their grandfather and great-grandfather. And just before I let you go, ma'am, uh, as a lot of people will be buying this book, what do you hope they will get out of it? I've just been browsing it through. It's a collection of photos capturing the emotions of Samora, him addressing uh, people in the rallies, him also pausing, uh, uh, you know, being a founding father of Mozambique as an independent state. But uh, what can you say to the buyers of this book? It's uh, simply to have a glimpse of uh, who he was as a leader, but more importantly, what kind of society he was driving to build in Mozambique because it's not only the way he communicated with the people, it was the way he would capture the imagination of his people and together to move along as, you know, we used to say there was no difference between the leader and the people those days. So that glimpse, I think it can also become an inspiration of what type of a leadership we need to have in our region, on the continent, if we are really to galvanize the masses of people, for them to take ownership of their development processes, from planning, implementing, and demanding accountability, assessing the results. That's what our continent is yearning still to have. And I hope the book will give that glimpse in, but of course it's just the beginning. We are hoping to have more and more ways of presenting Samora to South African society. All right, ma'am. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. So there you have it, Vio. We're just coming to you live once again here from Houghton, uh, right at the Nelson Mandela Center of Memory. Of course, a very hearty words from the widow of Samora Michelle, Grasa Michelle, talking about uh, the significance of today and how the family Vuyo is still yearning to find answers about uh, his mysterious passing on the 19th of October 1986 in that Russian aircraft uh, that really just uh, fell down and essentially quite a number of questions as to what led to that. So back to you in studio.